Hello, Shalom Aleichem. Welcome back to another installment in this series, Sefer, jo Sefer Yona. Verse by verse, select commentaries. This week we are doing Jonah 1, verse 7. Again, this series is a um, companion series to my other series on Jonah, Sefer Yona, verse by verse. Um, that is an exclusive for my patrons over on Patreon. In that uh, series, I take each each and every verse, and I break the verse down uh, by the grammar. We, we examine every gr uh, grammatical point. We look at the vocabulary. And we go through it. Um, and I make reference to the first Hebrew primer, the uh, chapter in which uh, the various grammatical features can be found. Um, that series is meant to be a, a bridge for students who have um, a good deal of textbook learning under their belt but are uh, ready to branch out into just reading a, a text for themselves. Okay, um, if you found this series or any of my other series to be of benefit to you, uh, we should consider su subscribing to this channel. Um, click the bell icon if you uh, want to receive updates. Um, if you uh, feel that this project or any of my other projects are worthy of your support, I wish you would consider uh, making a small donation via PayPal or becoming a patron over on Patreon. Um, e for the companion series, um, say for Yona verse by verse um, that I just mentioned, um, support at any level gains access, even as little as a dollar a month. Okay, let's get going. I've wonked on for too long. Jonah 1 verse 7. Um, this week we're going to look at Jonah, uh, look at the verse, uh, with, a com with a comment of Rashi. Uh, Rashi is perhaps the most famous of the rabbinic uh, commentators. Um, Rashi is uh, really a, a uh, acronym for Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchaki. Um, Rashi. Uh, his years are from 22nd of February 1040 through 13, 13th of July 1105. Um, he is probably the uh, one of the, the, the the proudest sons of Troyes, France. Um, he uh, there was a, a quite a, a scholastic community in, in the Jewish sense. There um, was a, a center of learning. Uh, for information concerning uh, Rashi, you can be sure check out his, his wiki. Um, it's uh, very well done. Um, follow this link. Okay, here is a. Uh, 16th century uh, woodcut of Rashi. Um, this is, uh, of course, uh, five, you know, uh, an imagining 500 plus years removed from Rashi himself. So who knows what Rashi really looked like? We have no contemporary uh, drawings. Um, nevertheless, um, this is the uh, sort of the uh, Icon, you know, iconic image of a scholar leaning over his books, writing. He's got books over here on the, uh, the podium. Okay, Rabbi Shlomo Rashi. Okay, um, Rashi, again, is probably the most famous of the commentators. Uh, he, his hand uh, touched all areas of Jewish uh, learning, um, especially uh, the, the Bible. The, the Book of Books, the uh, Tanakh, as uh, well as the Talmud, the Talmud Bavli, the Babylonian Talmud. Um, his comments are considered basic to the learning of both. Um, Rashi, again, stands for Rabbi Shlomo Yitzchaki. Um, however, there are those to, who, who want to say that it also can stand for Rabban Shel Yisrael, the teacher of Israel. Uh, that is just an homage to how uh, basic his, uh, his his comments are to Jewish learning. It's the first commentator that children learn, and the study of Rashi uh, accompany, accompanies us uh, as, as religious Jews um, for our entire lives. 
Uh, most of the other commentaries will make reference to uh, issues in Arashi. Um, this is the Art Scroll set. Uh, this is a very fine set for those looking to get started with Rashi. Rashi has a sort of a, a terse style. Um, it's kind of hard to read for the uh, newcomer. Um, but for the diligent student, uh, it, there's a lot to benefit from, uh, from working with Rashi. Uh, if you're interested in looking at that set, here's the arts, the uh, Amazon link for that. Check it out. Um, I can uh, I recommend this uh, this set highly. Um, also, um, Rashi is famous. There's the famous question of what's bothering Rashi. Uh, Rashi's style is as such that he always seems to be answering questions but he does not always state his question so we have answers and there's a whole um, style of learning Rashi a method in learning Rashi in which we try to figure out precisely what question Rashi is is seeing in the text or what his uh, impetus was for answering so we look at that uh, it is, is uh, for uh, for scholars. It, it, it many times is a great sport to try to figure out exactly what it is that Rashi is asking uh, and answering. Um, one of the great uh, uh, you know, columns uh, that are dealing with this can be found at this link. It's Asia Torah. Um, they have a link on what's bothering Rashi. The, these columns that deal with the issues in the text of Rashi. The author of that um, of that column also has a uh, a book, a series of books. I think there's actually a, a part two, a second set of these. What's bothering Rashi? That's the question. Um, that can be found at this uh, Amazon link. Um, I will put these links in the uh, in the details below, also for your convenience. Okay, let's get on to the verse and let's see exactly what is bothering Rashi. Okay, the verse here a couple times. V'yomru ish el re'ehu lechu v'napila gorolot v'neda deshelmi hara hazot lanu v'yapilu gorolot v'yipol hagorol al yona. One more time. V'yomru ish el re'ehu lechu v'napila gorolot v'neda b'shel mi hara hazot lanu v'yapilu gorolot v'yipol hagorol al yona. V'yomru and they said, ish el re'ehu, each man to his fellow, lechu, come or literally go, v'napila. And let us cast Gorolot lots Veneda and let us know or so that we should know Bishelmi Harahazot Lanu on account of who this uh, evil is upon us. Viapilu Gorolot and they cast lots. Vipal ha Gorol al Yona and they and the the uh, Gorol, the lot, fell on Yona. He was uh, singled out, uh, apparently, as the one causing the, the, the problem. Okay, so Rashi uh, comments. He says, uh, on the, commenting on the words of the sailors, Lechu v'napila gorolot. Yeah, come let us uh, cast lots. So he says, or he answers, we'll try to figure out what the question is. He says, Roim Hayu Shar Svinot Holchot Biyam Besholom. They saw that the other uh, ships were going in the sea in peace. Beshalhem, and, and they, and they the, the, concerning their lot, their, their ship, their ship was shattering. 
their ship was about to be broken. Omru, they said, Bishol Echa Mimenu, who? They said that this, uh, this uh, problem, this uh, storm that is, uh, was afflicting the, the ship is on account of one from us. Bishfil, on account of Echad Mimenu, one from us, who it is, the thing, the storm. And then he says further, Ken Matzinu Bipirche de Rabbi Eliezer. And uh, thus similarly can be found in the Midrashic compilation called Pirke de Rabbi Eliezer. So he says that they, uh, that, that what was animating this question was that they saw that the other ships were, were getting by just fine. And uh, th this wasn't just a, a regular storm. Um, this was a, it seemed to single out this ship. Uh, and as a result, um, they uh, surmised that, uh, that there was some somebody or, or some guilt on the ship that uh, the, the gods or, 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 or the god uh, was, uh, was dealing with some retribution. Okay, so that's the answer, and and he has a uh, midrashic text to sort of lean on here. So what is the question? Um, the, the question is, if they're in the storm, just any old storm, um, you know, they to to pray for uh, salvation, to pray to be saved from a storm. Well, that's a normal thing. But is it normal to, uh, would we just, on average, would people cast lots to see uh, who, who, who was at blame for the storm? That's not a, a normal act. When, when, when disasters uh, befall us and they seem to uh, strike evenly, um, we may ask a society as a whole or we might ask big questions as to why does this happen? But we don't necessarily cast lots to find out who's at fault for this thing happening. That is not the way things typically work. However, we find that our sailors doing this in this verse. Therefore, the question is, why are they doing it? Why are they casting lots? Um, so it must be that they see that there's something different in their situation from everybody else's situation. Um, so meteorologically, uh, whether or not this is the case, uh, who knows? But midrashically, um, the uh, they, they Rashi, uh, by channeling Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer, um, is uh, is saying that they could see they could see that their situation was different from everybody else's because everybody else was was going by just fine. Um, the text itself is, is silent on that, although it does seem to imply it, um, just based on sort of how human nature is. Again, uh, if there was a storm that seemed to affect everybody, why would they be casting lots? So uh, that's what the, the Medrash is addressing. Rashi asked that question, um, what, why exactly are they drawing lots? That's not normal behavior in, in, uh, when disaster is about to, uh, to befall you. And uh, his answer is uh, in accordance with the, uh, with the compilation, Medrash compilation, Pick of the Rebellion. Okay, that is Rashi. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you'll join me again next week. Uh, learn more with me. To sample these commentaries. Get a, a taste of what the various authors are like. Um, okay, I wish you the best. Kol Tuf, Keep learning.